There we go. Okay, so where you're going to start to get into real mining, come to your Bright MLS, right? Mm -hmm. Once you get into Bright MLS, if you click search and you come right down at the bottom, you're going to see it says Remind Pro. Mm -hmm. You click on Remind Pro and it's going to take you to Remind. This is where the magic happens. So you can pick, you can, if you want to do a community, if you want to, you know, form a neighborhood, just come over here and you can just put, go to search and you can put the address on there. Okay. Um, we have, let me take this 1120 Carinoso. If I click on 1120 Carinoso, it takes me to, oh, why does it keep remembering my decision for forever? How about that? <laughs> so, <laughs> so th this is a property it just shows you this property and it tells you this townhouse it shows you the equity in the house you know things like that let's say for example you don't even have a specific house you just want to take a neighborhood right let's go back to search and let's say let's just pick a city instead let's say we take um, um, Hunter's Ridge let's just say Hunter's Ridge Let's take that commit. Let's take that neighborhood, Hunters Ridge Road. If you pick Hunters Ridge, and with Hunters Ridge Road, in Maryland, we're gonna say MD. Uh, why is it giving me? Okay, I'm gonna just pick this one. So. It comes up and it shows you all these bubbles. These bubbles are houses, right? Mm -hmm. I can click on this one and then just zoom in. Keep zooming in until I begin to see dots. See those dots now? Those dots, come on, those dots represent homes. Oh, come on. This doesn't like me today for some re reason. So you see these dots right yeah. these are homes the more you zoom in the more you begin to let me move i want to get to okay here we go so you see these dots i can pick up on any of these and when you actually click on any one of them what you notice is on your right hand side it's just going to tell you it's going to give you a little bit more information about that house so it tells mm -hmm. the person that's a lease. If I click another one, it goes there. It tells me that's a three bedroom, three bath house, right? It gives me an idea of what, you know, information on that house. This is how you know, you know, you click on any one of them, it takes you to the house. If I want to deal, drill in a little bit more, I can click on this so I can see a little bit more about the house. And this is what I was talking about um, during the Zoom meeting. I hope it pops up. Okay. And so what you'll find is when you scroll, it tells you if it, this particular house, I believe, is actually on the market right now. No, it's just closed. It's just closed. So when you come over here, it's going to give you information about this property. This is the agent that sold it. This might not be the best um, property to show because mm -hmm. this is closed, right? So... Um, if it was a, a, another property will show you and tell you, okay, this house, you're going to find all the information here about, you know, the sell score of this house. If it's a high, a medium or a low, it's going to tell you how long they live in the property. It's going to tell you who are the people living in the property. It gives you information about when they purchased it, to, you know, what's the assessed value of the property, you know, because look over here in 2021, it gave you roughly what, you know the market value of the property is that this is not a hundred percent accurate it's just right. a snapshot right mm -hmm. so but it gives you a lot of details about when was the pro pro property purchased how was it purchased was it just you know a deed transaction you know it tells you all of these things when it was done it gives you school valuation all that kind of stuff you can now go over here owners and associated people if you click on that it tells you, if you click on that, it tells you who owns the house, right? Down here, it tells you who owns the house. If you click over here, you'll be able to see, 
the phone number and the email for that person. So if you want to send them emails, you can just copy that email and you can send them an email, right? If you, you know, if you want to do a market analysis, you can do that and send them that. If you want to call them, you can do that. But now at least you know that house, you can say, okay, I'm going to go market in that neighborhood. So now that you know that, you just all you do is get your materials together, do a little bit of research in that neighborhood, and then boom, you're on your way. And you can start putting your door hangers on the door. So that's how you get to Remind, and that's how you do that. You can really do a lot of drilling down on this. Another thing that, I, that you could do, for me, again, because I'm so geeky about just trying to find a little, bit of, a little bit more things about the house, let's say I go and find one that happens to be something that as in, no one has lived in it or someone, it hasn't been sold, you know, in, say, in the last 10 years. I can go, let, let, let's actually come over here. I can come over here and research, right? And we'll clear all of this. If you look over here where it says layers, if you click on layers, you can tell it that you want to know, if you click on property value, you can see this, that you want to only know homes with property value of 500,000 to a quarter of, um, uh, three quarters of a million dollars, right? So you can tell it exactly what you want it to narrow things down to. And you click apply. I want to know who has home equity of anything up to 250,000 or anything from 250 to 500,000. I click apply. As you're doing that, it begins to move things away a little bit, right? So I click apply. So you begin to now see, let's say if I change it to Actually, no, let's leave it like that because now the moment you did that, the moment we did, let me go back to home equity. I'm going to change this because I want to see something. Okay, I'm going to do all of that and we say apply. When we do that in, the, in a couple of seconds, it's lagging for whatever reason, but it's going to highlight basically those okay. colors. See? Right mm -hmm. there. So you, know, you can see the legend. They, these okay. are the houses that are up to to anything between 250 and 500. So you can say, you know what? Those are the people that I want to target because they have a lot of equity. They might right. really have an incentive. They don't know that they want to sell their house, but if I show them the reason why, now they probably want to. I can go over here and click sell score. I will only want you to show me people with a medium and a high sell score. So when it narrows all of these things down, those will be the only properties that you'll see. If you look over here, it tells me there are only two results that matches every single thing that I want. So mm -hmm. the more you tell it, the more it narrows it down. So if you want to pinpoint and say, I'm only targeting people with huge equity in their homes, you can get it done this way. And then you know the address of the property, boom, now you can go. You can go to that neighborhood and knock on that particular door, you know, and Another thing is, I always go with very, so much optimism, right? That if I if I only have five properties that says that as this criteria, my goal is I'm going to those five properties, but someone is going to see me mm -hmm. knocking on someone's door, putting something there, and walking away, and I'm not coming to their door to put anything there. They might just say to me, "What's that about? What's going on?" That's the mm -hmm. conversation that I want. You know, so I never assume that I'm never going to meet someone that wants to talk to me. Or someone might be coming and say, what are you doing over here? Why are you knocking on the door? They're on vacation or whatever the case is. The goal is I just want to have a conversation with you, with anybody. I know the answers that I'm targeting because of what the system tells me. But I, do, I don't ever discount the possibility of meeting someone else that want to have a conversation because they're homeowners. People are curious. Mm -hmm. They see you, you know, driving off with your hat or your shirt or whatever, and you're knocking on someone's door. They don't know if they're the police or whatever you are. They don't know. So they're curious, and people will talk. So you're engaging them. That's the way I use the Remind. That's the way I use my canvassing or my farming or, you know, just getting to know neighborhoods and stuff. So that's what I do on that. I hope that helps. Mm -hmm. That's very helpful. Thank you. Okay, perfect. So... Next where do question. I? Uh huh. Go on. Sure. Where would I go pull the buyer agreement? Buyer agreement. So, um, you can get all your buyer agreements if you're using um, zip forms. You can get them in zip forms. If you're not using zip forms, you can go on tra the Trello board and get them. Do you not have to get to the Trello board? 
Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. You can get them from Trello board. You can also get them from, let me, um, let me use a different screen. You can also get them from you actually going into your Skyslow forms. Okay. So let me show you how, uh, I don't know, have you guys, um, uh, Dr. Bola and David, have you guys used this, uh, the forms in Skyslow? The sky slope form. That's all, all I use. I don't know about the Trello board that you just mentioned. Okay. Um, and I know with the zip form, you probably have to pay. So I only use the one from Sky Slope. Awesome. So this is the thing that I want to be it, zip forms. Yes, you do have to pay. It comes with the, the MLS, but I think they either they try, try to change or whatever. I'm not sure. But if um, if you have to pay for it, don't ever use it. You know where you can get all your forms for free? Even forget in Skyslope because if you don't put your correct association in there, you might not be able to upload all your forms. Yes. Get all yeah. of your forms from Maryland Association of Realtors. All your forms oh. are right there. You can download all of your forms and save them, you know, in your uh, in a folder on your laptop, and you can get all of your forms from there. And then when you get all those forms, you can move them into um, uh, Skyslope. So that's one way. But in zip forms, and you're absolutely right, man. So yes, this is where you get it. So if you come into your zip forms, um, into your sky slope, you can come over here and files. Once your association and everything is set up, once you set everything up, see where under your name, when you click your name, it says associations. So all you need to do is, my association is right here. My DC G car and my Maryland Association of Realtors. So boom, yeah. Once you have your association, if you have, it, if you're a member of any other association, just come in here, search for it, click on it, and it's going to upload it. So you don't have to search for your any forms ever again. All of your forms will be right here if you're a member, right? So once you're in here, then all you have to do is um, make sure all your profiles and everything is set up correctly. This happens to me all the time. I told you. Um, I'm, the 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 um, Mac always does funny wonky things when I'm using it. So your forms are right here, and these are files. This is just what I do. What I do once I have my forms right, I actually create templates for each one of them. So in my folder here, you see I've got seller templates with MAR forms. Buy a template with MAR forms. I've got miscellaneous forms, miscellaneous forms that I downloaded that I just put on here. You know, I've got my G car forms as well, right? So let's say you want to create a template. This is one of the say you want to create a template for your buyers. Just go over there, click buy templates. So each time you don't have to always go back in there and recreate forms. Once you create that template, this system is super easy and super good that it will walk you through every single thing. You click on next, once you click that buyer, you click on next, it's asking you, what do you want to name this? Just say my buyer templates, right? Give it the, give it the name you want, buyer templates. You can say buyer templates, um, G car forms, you know, like I did on those other ones. And boom, you continue. Now you, add, you can add all of your forms in here. Whatever forms that you think you need, you put it on there. If you don't know, on Trello board, and if you want, I can send you a checklist. You just need to get the checklist from either Trello board or Maryland Workplace or Virginia Workplace. They have the, they have the forms in your workplace as well, in your Virginia Workplace, Dr. Bola, okay? So you're going to find those forms in there. So you can go in there and you can just get okay. your checklist. Yes, ma'am. You go in there and get your checklist so you know what forms go into every single deal. And you can just create your template. And the moment you do that, it's so much easy for you to just, when you want to create a file, you can just come in here and create a file. If I want to create, once I have my templates, let's say I want to create a new file. I just go create a new file. Oh, I'm representing a buyer. Boom. I put it on there. What do I want to name it? I want to use my buyer's name. So I'm just going to, I can do my clients, is a company of trust if that's what it is. I do test just for the purpose of what we're doing right now you know i do that that's the name of my contact i don't have a property yet i don't need to worry about that 
how do I want to name my file? I just want to name my file test, right? And boom, what, do I want to use GCAR forms? Am I using an MAR forms? I'm using GCAR because it's a deal in Montgomery or in Greater Maryland. Boom, I do that and then I click create. Super easy. So this is like where you get all your forms. And then you can just add any form that you need right here. Does that answer your question? Does that help you? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Okay. So this is how you're going to create the file and the way you're going to just go ahead and, you know, click each thing. And it tells you, do you want to apply the template? Because I already have a template. Yeah. I say, yeah, apply the template. That's the template I want to use. Is it via G call? That's what I want to use. And I don't know why it's not listed. It's not there. I don't know what it is. <laughs> if for some reason it's not letting me click that. Click that. So, and I click apply. Everything is stuck today. But once you click apply, it's going to go. It's supposed to go. I don't know why mine is not. Okay, everything is frozen now. Nothing is working. But but you get the idea. So that's what's going to happen. You, you click on that, you click next, and everything goes. And you have all your information in there. That's how you upload your forms, and you start working on them. Next question. Let's look at more practical things here. Is, is this helping? Mm -hmm. Okay. Dr. Bola, you have a question? <laughs> yes, sir. Um, so I was asking, actually going to ask if we could have like a continuation of what we had um, last week. Okay. Um, and just kind of like focus on the listing presentation instead. Um, okay. Because that's 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 where i am struggling i actually okay. have two listing appointments tomorrow all right um, so let's talk about that what, what what is it that you're struggling <laughs> with when it comes to listing presentations is so, it the presentation that you're concerned about or is it is it what you're going to say there that you're concerned about or is it that you feel that you're not prepared enough to know what to say what exactly are you because then we can actually attack that particular thing yeah so I I think I think it's primarily what I am going to say. It's not that I am not prepared, you know, because you know the different scenario okay. for each home. Um, I want to be able to, I guess, sound or or to just for lack of better word, flow, and not stutter or stammer when I'm talking, or. You know, I, I want to understand how to kind of like go from meeting the, the owners to then having them sign the agreement without being okay. too aggressive. Okay, so let, I love practicality. That's what this class is all about, right? So let's talk about the things that will make you comfortable. So I'm going to start with, how did you get this lead? Is it a lead? Is it a sphere of influence? How did you get it? Oh, uh, a lead. Feasible. Okay, so it's a feasible. It's, it's a for sale yes, by owner. For sale okay. by owner. All right. So the easiest. So it's a for sale by owner. Did you make the contact or did they reach out to you? I made a contact. I got the contact information from Zillow. Okay. So you went on Zillow. You did go, and then you contacted the uh, the owner, and you said, "Hey, I think I can help you sell this house and make it." No. What, what was the conversation no. About? Like. I didn't quite say that. I just okay. said, look, you know, um, I would like to, you know, are, are you still, are you still selling your home? Right. All right. And yes. Okay. Wonderful. I will, I have some buyers that may be interested in your home. I would like to come in, you know, look, take a, a quick tour of your house. Okay. Well, first I got the whole, I'm not listing with agents and I'm like, okay, great. I'm not asking you to list with an agent. I just want to see if your home would meet the, you know, the criteria that my buyers okay. are looking for. Awesome. So. so the way you already attacked that is beautiful. So okay. having done that, I want you now to think about it this way. If you're not sure, of, I'm the guy that wanted to sell my house. I think I can do it by myself. I don't need any agent. That's why I want to do it by myself. 
and you called me and you said to me, hey, Jimmy, I have buyers. I want to take a look at your home. I want to preview it for them. I just want to get an idea if this is going to meet my buyer's needs. You know, right. and I come over and I say, sure, 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 come over. If you show up now, Dr. Bola, at my house, and you start bringing paperwork out and start talking about a listing presentation, I'm going to be like, you disingenuous. I don't want to talk to you. Have a nice day. Exactly. It doesn't matter what you say. Yeah. Right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. If you show up and you anything, if you say anything about a listing presentation, it's not going to work because I'm going to shut it down instantly. Okay. That's why I said I love practicality. So okay. when you when you already approached someone like that, this is what you're going there to do. Throw mm -hmm. away every paperwork that is going to be a listing presentation. Throw it okay. away. The only paperwork that you need to have with you is... You need to go you need to make sure you do a very good market analysis got it yep have good comps mm -hmm. know what houses are selling for know the reason why one is priced higher mm -hmm. which means you need to know if there are renovations in that particular home that's why they have the the value is higher you know things like that if I'm you, I'll get to that neighborhood at least 30 minutes before I'll drive around. Do you have, do you guys have on your phones, right? Do you guys have the home snap? Yes. App on your phone? Yes. Okay. Um, Maria is saying she doesn't have it. Maria, you need to go to, again, <clears throat> just, I digress real quick, but if you go into, again, if you go into the MLS dashboard and you look at the bottom where we started when we saw the Remind Pro, are you still seeing my screen? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. See right next to Remind Pro is HomeSnap Pro. That's where you're going to get that app. Okay. So you're going to HomeSnap Pro, download the HomeSnap Pro, have it as an app so you can have it on your phone. So... Dr. Bolo, you get to that community on time, right? Okay. And then take your take take your HomeSnap Pro app out, and just if you look, I don't know if you guys can see. I may have to turn a light off so you can see my screen. Um, when you click on HomeSnap Pro, when you okay. click on HomeSnap Pro, you're gonna see at the very top there's a camera to the right. There's a camera at the very top. If you click open that camera, it okay. turns around and you're going to see something like this. Got it. Mm -hmm. Yes. If you see that, point that towards any house in that community. Okay. And just take a picture of it by pressing this blue button. Just take a picture of it. Okay. When you take a picture of that, see, I just pointed to the wall. And look at what it gave me. Even if you don't see that particular house, if it doesn't capture... Okay, I'm going to make this room a little bit dark so I don't have any reflection on that side. Give me one second. I'm going to turn a different light on. So, because the idea is... Oh, my gosh. <laughs> this is crazy. If so, if you, if, you, if you just point, even if it doesn't capture that particular house, see all those dots? Mm -hmm. Can you see all yes. those? are houses. I just did it in my house and it just captured everything. Those are houses. So this is a tool that you can use to show off to your Facebook guy. But we're gonna yes. talk about how you're gonna use it later on, right? But you, if you walk around that neighborhood and he's taking snap pictures or whatever, I, this gives you an idea, say, okay, houses in this neighborhood are saying for 636, houses in that neighborhood. Now, again, please, Note that this is not a hundred percent accurate. So, but I'm going to use this to say this, especially when you find a property that says off market and it's giving you a certain value. What I want you to use and remember is that is prob probably what they purchased the house for when they bought the house a few years ago. Especially if it's off market, what you want to look at more is if you see a red one. If you click on the red one, the red one says it was sold June 20, June 24, 2021. So you can use that and say, hey, I saw that houses in your neighborhood, you know, a few ones just sold a few months ago, one sold for seven something. You know, those are the kind of things that begins to give you the knowledge and idea about what's going on in a certain neighborhood, right? 
which becomes part of what you're going to end up using and talking about when you're talking to this Facebook guy. But get there early, get that kind of an information so you get an idea because it's going to be conversational pieces of what you can use. All right. I apologize. I don't know what was going on with my internet. No took him back. But can you hear can you hear what we're talking about? Um, I, I can't like don't hear. It's going in and out. Okay. I couldn't I hear you. Okay. Yeah, I couldn't hear you for a while. No worries. I'm gonna send the link to you once it's finished. I'm gonna send you the link. Okay. Once it's done, Thank you. Yeah. But that's one of the things that your home snap will do. So use that home snap app, right? To be able to get a good idea of what's going on in the in, in that area. Now you're going in there so use that when you but so now when you get in contact so like i said make sure you have market analysis market report be able to interpret it and have a conversation if you need to okay. when you get to that point now when you show up tomorrow and you knock on the guy's door and he opens the door so what you're going to be like is now remember you already know what the value of his house is you right. know what the value of his house should be. So let's say, for example, this guy is selling his house for $600,000. But your market analysis has told you that that house could probably sell for six fifty, dollars right? Okay. Hopefully, it's more than what he's selling the house for, right? Hey, even if he's, if, even let's say he's, he wants six fifty dollars for his house. But the value is six hundred. Let's say he's overpricing the house. It doesn't matter whichever way, whether he's overpricing it or he's underpricing it, right? You have that information, okay. so that's what you're going to use to be able to have a conversation with him. Then when you get in, you look at, oh wow, you just did this renovation, things like that. Pay attention to those things and talk about, oh my client would like okay. this. These are the things that my clients are looking for, you know. So all of those. You have it at the back of your mind, and you then you ask him these questions. Questions like, how many people have actually come by to look at this house? How many offers mm -hmm. do you have? Hopefully, hopefully you've asked him this question first, though. Are you willing to pay commission if I bring you a buyer? And how much? Make sure you ask that question. Okay. Because don't forget, the reason why you said you're going in there is you told him that you have buyers. Right? right. So be bold and ask him. That should be one of your first questions, even over the phone. But when you show up there, that would be... So how much are you willing to pay me if I bring you a well-qualified buyer and maybe even pay, you know, above whatever you're asking for? Depend again, I don't know. Let me ask you one quick question. Based on your market analysis... How much, what, what is this selling okay. this for? How much is this selling this property for? 345. How much? 345. Okay. 345. And what did your market 3, analysis 345,000. Yes, got you. What did your um, market it's, analysis it's, say? It's between, yeah. It's between 340 and 355. For the first one, yeah. So between three forty and three fifty five, and he wants to say for three forty five. Correct. So he's he's smart. He put it in the right spot. So that's because if I was marketing his house too, I'll probably be around there. You know, based on my market analysis, because that way you can generate more. You know, people in the market. So that's a reasonable you know offer. But now, so now you look at the house and you say, okay, are you willing to pay? You know commission and how much are you paying he tells you what he's paying great then you know once you walk through the house while you're talking to him you can ask him questions like how many buyers have you had how many people have come over here to look any particular reason why you're trying to sell this for yourself how easy has it been for you you can ask him those questions how easy has it been for you now this particular property you may know i, I don't want to discourage you you know that you will or will not get it but i want you to be prepared that you don't feel that you did not do a good enough job and this is the reason why because it's very rare that you're going to have a feasible person that mark, that prices their property that accurately okay most of them usually they overprice 
most of them. I see. They usually overprice because they think they can do themselves and they want to make the most money. So, but you can find out from this guy what are these motivating factors? Why does he want to sell? How quickly does he want to sell? And then by questions like how many people have come to look at the house, if he hasn't had many, then you can actually get in and say to him, listen, I do have buyers, like I said, and I'm going to go and give them the feedback on this house. But have you thought about, you know, since you don't have enough exposures, if he hasn't gotten a lot of people looking at it, or even if it's a case of how convenient and easy is it for you to always be the one opening the door for them or to try and do this on your own, right? Find out those Correct. things that are annoying to him that is not convenient for him and then offer to say, I'll take this on and I'll do them for you. That will be your best way okay. of getting get that listed. So don't worry about paperwork. Don't worry about none of that kind of stuff. This is going to be a okay. good conversational piece for you. That's the way you want to do it. You know, you want to talk to him about the value. And then while you're doing that, you'll be like, okay, uh, you know, I could actually do this. Way. Another thing you could offer him is this. If he says he really hasn't had a lot of showings on it, say, how about I, I, I organize or arrange for you a free open house? Offer to do okay. an open house for him. Because if you offer to do an open house for him and he's okay and willing for you to do it, you say to him, I'm spending my money to do the open house. I'll be here. The only agreement I want from you is if anybody comes and they don't have any representation, I represent them. Or if anybody comes and they want me to help them sell their house, you know, I represent them. You know, you don't have to pay okay. for anything. I'll bring the drinks. I'll bring, you know, whatever. And I'll do an open house. He might just say to you, boom, let's do it. And the, the service you give him is what's going to end up him turning around and say, when he's frustrated and he can't get the, set, the, the people to buy it, he's going to say, Dr. Paula, can you just take the listing for me and do it? That's the way it typically works with fees bulbs. Because he's pricing it in a way that is middle of the road. 345 mm -hmm. when you say that, you know, the house is you know, up to 350 yeah, he's right there. Someone like that, you you might even try and talk him down to bring it down a little bit less than that so he can get more traffic, especially if he hasn't been getting a lot of traffic. And that's the other thing you can do. Also, go into Zillow. You know, if you go back into Zillow with that address and you put that address in there, mm -hmm. Zillow is going to tell you how many people have looked at that property. Oh, really? Yes. You, oh, you I, go I, I didn't Zillow, Yes, Zillow will okay. tell you exactly how many people have been looking at that property and what the story is behind that property. Zillow will oh. tell you. That. Yes. Um, I didn't know let that. me see if I can. Let me I know see that I can, I can see how many days it's been on, on the market. Yes. I didn't know that I could see the. It will tell you how many days it's been on the market, and it will also tell you exactly that. It will let you know. Let me see if I can get into Zillow.com here. Uh, let me do. Let me open a new screen. Uh, I've got, I've got this little. Okay, there we go. I think I can get in there now. Um, yeah, Zillow will tell you, you know, what is going on as far as, you know, how many people have been looking at a property. So you can use that to have a conversation with them too. That listen, so many people have looked at your property. They've clicked on this property, but they haven't given you an offer. Could it be because you're overpriced? That could be one, you know, mm -hmm. because, you know, that could be, yeah. I mean, if your valuation is saying to you, you know, between 340, you said, and 350, yeah, 350. That 345, that's a good pricing, but that also could mean, you know, um, something else. Give me one quick second, please. Sure. Hello, Kevin. Can I call you back in a couple of minutes, please? Yes. I'm in the training class. Yes, I'll call you back. Thanks. Sorry about that. <laughs> that's um. No problem. Thank you. That's, that's an investor that wants me to lease this property. So, mm -hmm. what's the address of this property? Oh, I'm gonna have to look for it. Uh, one second. I'm gonna have to look for that quickly. One second. And we're, we're gonna we're gonna be rounding up now. Guys, we're going to write, because I know everybody's tired, so we're going to round up very soon. But I would like you to do me a favor. Tomorrow, text me or call me, because you're going to have questions, you know. <laughs> sure. Call me or text me, everybody, if you have any questions, seriously. If I don't pick up, I'll text you back, because 
you know, I just want your juices to be flowing and you're ready to just go out there and conquer the world. Do you, do you have the address yet? Yeah, no, not yet. I'm sorry. You know, my computer yeah. is just a bit no, slow. Let, let, I'm a, let, me see if I, let me see if I can just, I'm trying to, David, do you have any address, property that you're showing or anything like that? Yeah, actually, it just came from a listing appointment. Just got. Okay. Um, sorry. Give me the address. Uh, when to show? Um, let me see. Yes. Because if it's on Zillow, it will show you. It will tell you how many people have been looking at it. Yes. Uh, okay. So, anybody have any address? Just. I'm in the MLS right now. You want me to just give you an address? Um, yeah, just give me an address in the MLS. Two zero one zero. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead, David. 2010 uh, Malvern Way. 2010. Yes, yeah, Malvern. M A L V E R N Way. Okay, Malvern Way in Frederick? Yes. Okay. So if you look at this property, it says it's for sale. And. Come on. So he's telling us, um, let's say, there's an open house coming up. He's showing every single thing. And now we can, we can see how long it's been on the market, when it's listed, history. That's not what I want. This is not the part that I want, but let's see. Um, walk school. I'm trying to see more. No, that's not driver's. Good. No, <laughs> that's a it's a lot easier for me when I'm on the mat. Uh, when I'm on the um, oh, where is it? Uh, where is it? View on the dashboard. I don't think that's where it is. Ah, uh, that's not where it is. There is a place right here on Zillow that it tells you exactly how many people have been looking at the property. It's on views. Views. Where is it? Views. It? Look at views. Yes. I can't even see. I don't even. I, it's so hard for me to see anything on this computer. Okay, let me show you. Let me see. You can share your screen if, if, if you find it. But it tells you. It tells you how many people have clicked on it. It tells you how many people have seen that property. And those are the things that you can use to have a conversation with the owner and say, listen, people are looking at your house. But for whatever reason, they're just not buying it. Why? Those are the kind of questions that you know, makes you look like the genius and the guru and they're like, okay, maybe I need to start listening to you now, right? So those are the kind of things that you want to look for and be able to use when you're having a conversation. I'm so sorry I can't, for whatever reason, I can't find it here. I've got so many stuff on my screen right now that it's not even letting me open up stuff. But I'm going to just close that of that one. But, but seriously, this is, this is the kind of things that you can do that will help you out before you get there. Okay? Okay. I hope this helps. Um, okay. But yeah, the I don't information know. is yeah. there. The information is there that allows you to see resource center, that allows you to see exactly what is going on on that property you will be able to see you'll be able to know how many people have been looking at the property what how long has it been on the market you know all of those kind of things people that have clicked on it that have seen the property the same thing if you go on redfin if a client says you i found a property on redfin the same thing you'll be able to see how long it's been on the market the traffic on that property so you you just want to be so i hope that helps some dr Bolo, because that's what you want to do you want to go okay. there Go there on the basis of exactly what you said you wanted, you're there for. But while you're there, you're asking them questions. Find out how right. many people have come to see this property. 
How many offers have you gotten? If he says, I haven't gotten any offers yet, I really haven't gotten anybody come. Why? Why is it that you haven't gotten anybody, you know, come to look at it? Maybe I can help you bring more traffic if I, you know, if I do an open house for you. It's free to you. I get to stay in your house for two, three hours. I get to advertise it because I've got a lot of connections. And that's how, you know, those help that you're giving him will be the things that would allow this seller to eventually say, you know what, list my house for me because you're giving them service. You might be able to now say, okay, maybe you're overpriced. Maybe we did not put enough eyes on your house. I'm going to put your house on social media. I'm going to do a live on your house. I've got a wealth of buyers that want to buy. And then you send this link to all the buyers. You do it with HomeSnap and you bring them all over, you know, and you do yes. an open house, plan the open house, do a good open house, and he sees those things. It's free to him. He's bringing him a buyer. And if a buyer comes that is not represented, you, that's your deal. You represent those people to, you know, you go get into an agency agreement with them and then you, you put the contract in, right? Sure. So whether you get him to list with you or you get a buyer out of it, you can do it with an open house. You can do it by doing your recording. You can do it with, you know, some kind of um, social media, you know, whether you're doing um, 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 live, Facebook live, or you do it on YouTube live, anything, any of those things will get you more attention will make you look great in front of him and then he might not turn around to you and say okay you list for me and then he say, okay give me your full name as it appears on your id card give me your full email address and your phone number i'll put the agency agreement together and i'll send it to you that's it i see that's how you get him to sign an agency agreement without putting it in front of him and say okay i've seen your house uh, sign an agency agreement. Then you really think that you <laughs> never had any buyers in the first instance, right? So you want to stay with I the see. story that you've told them and you're touring because right. you, you were bringing a buyer. I'm touring for my buyers. I've got buyers who are exactly. you know, who want to buy in that neighborhood. So you stay authentic, you stay genuine, and you're able to get the information out to him and he eventually loves you and you, he signs an agency agreement. So right. may I ask a follow-on question, please? Sure. Yes. I know you have to go. Okay, so the other the other um, home that I'm supposed to be going into is a mobile home. So does does the same rule apply? Yeah, it's the is same it thing. Okay. It doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't okay. matter. It's the same thing. You just need to make sure that you get the correct comps for that. So when you're going to your RPR mm -hmm. to do to do the comps, make sure. Make sure that you, do, you when you get in there, you selecting manufactured homes. Okay. So you're able to get the correct comps. And the story is, just, is still the same. If you said to the guy, you've got buyers, lead in with that. Bring, you know, have a conversation with buyers. Because one thing that he will not like, that nobody will like, is you showing up. And as soon as you walk in, you're talking about, let me list it for you. Because don't forget, the reason why he never wanted to get any, anyone to list for him is he thinks that it's commission. easy, he can do it by himself, he doesn't want to pay anybody any commission. So tell him, I do all of this for free. Do you know that there's some agents, I mean, I don't do it, I will never do it, but there's some agents that would say to someone, listen, I, just, I, I charge you X amount just to list the property for you just to put it in the MLS to get more viewing. I will never do that, but, you know, agents do things out of the box just to gain someone's, you know, trust, if you will, just to be able to do something. And then eventually they get the, but I don't do, I just, I'll come straight. If I say to you, I've got bias, I'm coming with that idea. I've got bias. I want to talk to you about it. And then I'll find out some information from you. Then I'll say to you, since you haven't sold this house, how long has it been on the market? Two months. Why don't I do a free open house for you? And I'll bring you buyers. In this market, if you do an open house or a FISBO, you're going to get a ton of people. You condense that open house to only two hours. You advertise the heck out of that open house and you'll be shocked. I, you know, you'll be shocked when people show up and it's going to be, you're going to have 30, 40 people showing up. Do it at the right time. Don't do it this Sunday, Super Bowl. Nobody's going to show up this Sunday. You don't want to do that. 
Except you're doing it early, you know. I hope that helps. All right. So I'm going to, um, if, no, if there's no other questions, let's wrap it up. I'll put this together once it downloads. I'll send you the link and I'll post it on my, um, on my YouTube page. But please, like I said, give me a call tomorrow. Text me. Every one of you, please text me if you have any questions or something just pops on your mind that you need an answer to, let me know. Write it down. Let me know. Don't even waste paper. Just text it right away and say, Jimmy, what, what, this is what is on my mind. Whatever the case is, and I'll answer those questions for you. Okay? Let's make it happen. Let's get successful. Let's run in the, this next 90 days. Okay? Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. You're so much welcome, everybody. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. It's been my pleasure. Thank you so much. David, have a good one. You too. All right. Talk to you all soon. Uh-huh.